Hello, everyone. My name is Chris Dell. I'm the founder and CEO of Go Baller. Go Baller is a social discovery app for sports fans. We collect the most viral sports content on social media and put it in one place, personalized for each fan. Now, I've been a sports reporter for the last decade. Started out covering Little League Baseball when I was 15 in Sarasota, Florida. Most recently, covering the Brooklyn Nets for the New York Daily News and the New York Times. A problem that I've always had and that I've shared with my fellow colleagues and fans is that it's very hard to find fresh, original sports content after a game. I go to a press box with hundreds of other reporters. We're all writing the same exact story afterwards. Redundancy reigns supreme. It's really hard to find those fresh quality articles. You flip the script to social media and you get the same thing. It's an overabundance of content. Our social feeds are cluttered, whether it's Facebook or Twitter, trying to follow very specific niche interests. And that's where Go Baller comes in. We aim to make the sports consumption process on mobile more efficient, more fun, and to save time for our fans. Now we've seen the evolution of a sports fan over the last couple of years. Now, the first row, the front row of a game used to be all that mattered, getting those tickets. Now we see you know, the second screen experience becoming the new first screen experience. During our market research, we saw some pretty interesting stats. 26.7 uh, million tweets sent out during last year's NBA Finals between the Heat and the Spurs. I expect even more this year, especially if LeBron James makes it. Uh, compared to 17.7 .7 million TV viewers, we see this as a trend that's continuing to rise, the gap between these numbers continuing to widen. Uh, during our recent market research, we also surveyed over 300 different sports fans. We found some pretty unique places where they admitted where they consume sports on their phone. I like the one, 58% uh, in the bathroom. I think I'm in that one too. <laughs> um, so I just want to run over here and show you guys a really quick demo of a recent prototype that we put together. We're looking to have this become our first beta app uh, in preparation for the NBA Finals and the World Cup this summer. So um, this right here will give you an example of some, some of the content that we surface for our fans uh, in terms of evergreen content. So user-generated memes and GIFs that go viral on social media created by fans. Um, you get trending videos from YouTube, trending videos from Vine, the best of different social platforms like Pinterest, Tumblr, players post players posting on their Instagram accounts, et cetera. Now we also, we don't just curate content, we also create our own content for Go Baller in the form of kind of gamifying the process of a sports app. We consider ourselves about bringing type of BuzzFeed and Slate type personality to your typical aggregator, like a Zite, a Flipboard, or a Bleacher Report. Um, as you see here, questions where we get to know more about the user, such as, you know, is LeBron James overrated? I say yes. Um, if Kobe showed up at your house saying the cops were after him, would you let him in? We've, we've had a lot of, uh, we've had a lot of uh, great fan engagement when we demoed uh, this prototype uh, in front of different audiences. It's a fun way to kind of bridge the gap between newbie fans who might not be, you know, stats experts and people who consider themselves so, sort of uh, sports junkies. Now we look to garner revenue through affiliate marketing, um, putting different types of content in our streams such as, you know, sports apparel, or uh, athlete fashion wear that you know, goes viral on social media itself. What are the players wearing before and after the game? What are the latest sneakers LeBron came out with? What are the ones he wore in the game last night? We would obviously get a cut of that revenue and put that in our streams personalized for fans. We also see a potential in terms of a B2B social media wire service for sports media outlets. Um, I recently interned at the New York Daily News and I've written for the New York Times and other papers in Florida and they're really strapped in terms of covering social media adequately. We want to be able to offer them a live automated social media wire service where they can embed our streams onto their desktop and pay us a monthly subscription rate. Now in terms, of in terms of marketing, we look to really hit the ground, focus on regional cities that have multiple professional sports teams. We can kind of you know, start to grow organically, start small, and then scale big. Any public gathering, we want to take that offline sports experience and bring it online going to tailgating parties, hosting fantasy football drafts, going to, going to sports bars for live viewings. We've seen also, uh, just let me go back one, we've seen also meetup.com as an example of something that has worked in terms of this marketing tactic of hitting up, hitting up bars in big cities, really gaining kind of that buzz around the people who actually go and frequent these places. Competition we see in terms of ESPN and Bleacher Report, um, they really dominate you know, the stats, the box scores, the analysis. We want to focus on dominating the social conversation. You know, what's going viral? What's trending? What's the pulse of the moment? You know, we, we feel that the most, inter the most inter interesting stuff in sports happens off the pitch, not necessarily on the field. Uh, Fanatics is another social aggregator that you know, really brings in every single piece of content. We like to have our social content kind of weave together to tell the story from the players and the fans' perspective. 
Our team here, Pablo, is a Google product developer out in Mountain View. Lucas is our junior developer, a recent Princeton computer science grad. Marsha here is our CMO. She's a former marketing manager for IBM. Uh, we've been a finalist at two different startup competitions, first at Google New York City Startup Weekend, most recently at Three Day Startup. We recently teamed with General Assembly's UX design team to build our latest prototype that I just showed you. And what we're looking for is an accelerator program this summer. We're looking into a couple different ones in San Francisco, as well as Bisdom in Cleveland, uh, where we can have the resources to launch our first beta and eventually launch in the App Store. And we encourage you guys to support us on the journey. Go to signup.goballer.com to register for a beta invite. And we uh, thank you for your time. So, Alex, Any questions? Chris, great, great concept. Um, my one question is, though, that you touched on sources of revenue. You didn't give us any sense of the amounts and projections and stuff like that. What, what, do, you, what do you have in mind? Well, you know, realistically, we're looking at the first year in terms of really building a community really focusing on customer acquisition, app downloads, getting people really engaged with the app. You know, we feature you know, live in-game chats, you know, being able to comment on pieces of content, vote up and vote down on things. Um, so in terms of specific revenue numbers, I mean, it would all be you know, like a P&L at this point, you know, really kind of just you know, kind of guessing something out there. But I really think the affiliate marketing could really help us you know, add, add value to the streams in terms of making money. And then you know, I've been talking to different editors from sports media outlets you know, who are interested in this type of product. It's all about figuring the right price, how much would we charge per month, um, and who would be interested. So I think, you know, not, I don't know if I answered your question specifically, but we're kind of getting to that point where we can come out with, you know, hard, concrete, substantial numbers. And on the advertising side, are you thinking sponsored tweets? Or I wasn't sure exactly how it would work. You were talking about, you know, what the players were wearing or, or whatever. Yeah. I mean, how, how would that work? Well, in terms of the affiliate marketing, kind of, you know, surfacing content in terms of, you know, what kind of fashion can you buy? getting your hands on the latest sneakers. We see you know, different verticals, like Complex Magazine has just for sneaker heads. Um, we also would like to partner with brands to you know, have some type of a native advertising model, where you know, somebody like Nike can come in, or a smaller sports brand, to really build a cool type of ad, whether it's like a meme or a GIF, that would fit in with our type of content. Um, so that's kind of like another option in terms of the B2C side right now. What are the most important metrics, and since you're saying that building a Sure. What sort of, when you're, thanks, when you're putting together that sort of conversion funnel, what are the most important metrics for you so when you're you know, looking at customer acquisition? Sure. We're looking at um, numbers in terms of time spent on the app, um, you know, app downloads compared to how many, what percentage come back, um, you know, percentage of content shared during a stream, um, or example, how much, how much time someone spends actually personalizing the app, picking their favorite teams, their favorite players being able to follow events instead of just viewing like the main content stream. So I think more of it's in terms of time spent on the app and different types of ways that we look at, you know, really gauging those metrics. Got it. <clears throat> I was going to ask you uh, whether, I think sequencing is always important for startups, making sure you're not biting off more than you can chew in terms of uh, committing to a particular revenue uh, source. So affiliate marketing seems to me you'd have to build up the audience before brands willing to partner with you or spend time um, working with you. So syndicating the social media content for local news sources seemed really interesting to me. Is there any competition in that space? And have you it's, investigated? Yeah, sure. The, that, that's a good point because most of the social media apps for sports really focus on the big brands bringing in like the New York Daily News as the main source of content. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've you know, been a sports talk radio host for a very small community level, and there's tons of different you know, really good sports blogs out there who don't necessarily have the finances, the resources, um, who would really value their content being displayed. Um, and they have a lot, they have a lot of you know, readers themselves. So I think that's definitely kind of looking outside the top tier media outlet in whatever area we're in, and focusing on like kind of the outliers and who's second, third, how we can give them kind of extra value to compete with the, you know, the kind of the big dog in the area. Mm -hmm. Hi, my name is Robin from CrowdTangle. I know we've met before. Um, I'm in account development there and also an alumni of this program. Hi, Jeff. Uh, just a quick question of how you're actually organizing the content in the app. How is it, is it just pulling in from most recent or do you get to set how you want to see that performance? Is it aggregate engagement with those posts? I'm just curious how you're organizing it for your users? You know, yeah, well, that's a good question. At, at the time, at the moment, you know, we're kind of bootstrapping in terms of putting together a customized Twitter lists, 
um, curating her own stories using you know things like Storify, you know specific Rebel Mouse, da Rebel Mouse dashboards for teams. Uh, even CrowdTangle is something that I've looked into myself in terms of gauging like what's going viral on Facebook. Um, so I think right now it's a combination of the platforms that are out there we can use. Uh, we're, we're trying to develop an algorithm that would be able to kind of encompass all these different social media platforms at once. And I think the key is you know, kind of less is more because if we pull in every single piece of content, we kind of lose the value. Um, we want the different pieces of social media to weave together to tell that story. Um, so right now, we're using everything we have available to us. We hope to have our own system as we continue to develop the algorithm and work with more developers. Salim, Salim and then okay, Debbie. Uh, just a very quick one. Um, most large news publishers are paying somewhere in the region of a dollar to two dollars to get the people to download their free content apps. Uh, as a non-existing brand, um, how are you going to avoid that uh, two dollar user acquisition charge or how are you going to raise the funding to do that? Well, how are you going to get past the, the, the app store challenge? Um, well, as I said, you know, we're looking to get into an accelerator program and possibly another one afterwards where we can have the capital we need to launch our beta and to really hit the ground, spend some money on marketing, you know, hosting parties, you know, whether it's a tailgating party or, or at a sports bar, and really get people you know, to kind of spread the word for us, hoping that catches on. Um, at this point, I feel like it's, it's, um, there's more than just consuming content, and it's more of a personalized experience, and we hope that value catches on with fans, and that's really kind of, kind of the meetup.com model of starting this, you know, in a big city, starting small, and really focusing on you know, what are the you know, what are the specific niche bars for specific fans of teams that they go to, go into a big game and really kind of letting them know about our product um, in the best way we can. Oh, yeah. Do you want to jump in? Oh, yeah, yeah. I just wondered if you thought at all about the time shift your audience. So my husband's a big Duke basketball fan, and sometimes he can't see the game in real time. I wonder if there's a way of capturing the feed that he get to later. That's a great question. Um, one aspect of the app that I wasn't able to demo um, and that if anyone's interested, I can give you a more comprehensive demo after we're done, but uh, is being able to follow events. So if your husband's a fan of Duke basketball, there would be a specific stream just for the North Carolina Duke game, which would be available for anywhere, you know, from a week to two weeks after the fact. He would go in and see what was the conversation during that game, in addition to getting kind of the new, kind of updated viral content on Duke. 